The media knows that the turn of Doctor Who into gay pornography with the Rogue episode was so cringy, that the episode was so bad, there's nothing they can do to defend it. And so they've moved on very, very quickly to trying to hype up this two-part series finale for Doctor Who. And I'll remind you, when there, when there's this level of bad writing that Russell T. Davies and his team has, there's no excuse for it. Uh, Doctor Who episodes uh, used to be 14 a season. Uh, there was 13 in a special, at the very least. We're down to eight here. Uh, and so uh, they've cut it by half. Uh, the, the workload's half. Uh, and so, you know, they should be putting more script revisions into everything. I'm actually reading a book about Star Trek, like the original series, when it was uh, on the air. And, uh, you know, they had big oversight from Gene Roddenberry and Gene Kuhn uh, to where a lot of these scripts would get like eight, nine revisions because they just wanted to make it perfect for the show. And that's how they made a show that endured. What we're seeing with Russell T. Davies looks like a bunch of first drafts that have been turned in where he just had some fantasy of like being at a gay nightclub or something like that. Uh, Inserts that to Doctor Who. Uh, wants to have his dashing rogue show up and just make out with him in the middle of the uh, the Bridgerton ball and then and calls it a day, right? Uh, and it, so it's very, very clear that uh, there's not a lot of work being put into Doctor Who, and it is absolutely torching the series. Now, uh, the, the narrative's starting to break down a little bit, too. I'm going to show you a uh, media outline where it all but admits there's a major, major problem going on uh, with Doctor Who, and it's in the character moments, boom, of course. Uh, and uh, as they're gearing up for this finale, and we look at what's going on, you can see exactly the trouble that the show is in. Uh, for the uh, here, we, here we have a picture of, of uh, uh, Rose, uh, who is uh, the most beautiful daughter in the world, even though that's a guy, uh, along with Ruby Sunday to uh, you know further uh, just mess with uh, the lore uh, for everybody. And that's what's going to start with this uh, this week's uh, deal. We're going to get our, our transgender push right after the gay doctor push. And that, that's all it's about for these people. All they want to do is push their identity politics further and further, and they don't even care about the storylines at all. They're trying to destroy them. All right. If you're new to the channel, please hit the like and subscribe button. Join us here. I really have a great community for you of science fiction lovers who actually care about this stuff. You've been amazing over the last couple of months. And uh, please check out my Stars Entwined trilogy. I've got a full trilogy here of epic science fiction, which is on uh, print, ebook, and audio. Uh, my audio guy did a great job. And uh, we're just moving along forward. I'm actually in the middle of writing a sequel series to this, uh, which is going to just blow the doors off of any science fiction you've seen in the last 20 years. And I really appreciate you guys for being there. The, and uh, we've had a lot of new readers. And uh, Doctor Who fans are big readers, which is fantastic. It means you're smarter than the average audience, and that's why they can't really get away from this. So I'll put this in the description below. Thank you guys for supporting us in our efforts here. All right, so uh, if you look at the finale talk, uh, Russell T. Davies actually talked to Doctor Who magazine. I didn't even know they still had like a print magazine where they like do interviews and things like that. Kind of, Kind of doesn't make sense in 2024 to have that kind of thing because there's a new Russell T. Davies interview every like week, maybe sometimes every day. Uh, we saw we saw yesterday how he's actually admitting that you know it might even get canceled after the second season. This was bought for two seasons, and the reason it's been split, it, it it's the Netflix strategy uh, because the reason Do- Doctor Who used to have 14 episodes, now it has eight. Uh, it's really one split season, right? That they split into two seasons. So, so budget wise, they can make it one season, but they can call it two, so it looks like more of a success. It's kind of how Netflix does things by always commissioning two quote seasons, which is really just one season of sixteen episodes divided by two, uh, is how they do it. So, uh, they'll call it two to make it look bigger, better than it actually was, but it is really just one if you look at the the stuff before. So all the episodes are coming out. This one's going to be coming out uh, uh, on Friday, like normal. Uh, Seriously, I'm not making light of this, he wrote. This is Russell T. Davies in Doctor Who magazine. I can hear the worries. Listen to this. Uh, So have you noticed how their tones changed over the last, like, couple uh, months? So once the ratings came out, they, you know, uh, oh, the ratings aren't the whole story. They're watching on iPlayer. Then the ratings were low on that. Well, you know, maybe it's on Disney Plus. Then the Disney Plus ratings came out and uh, it didn't even chart. (laughs) Nobody's watching this. Nobody likes this fake Doctor Who. And so uh, now they're talking about, you know, this series might not continue. There's worries. 
Uh, this is something that's uh, that's brand new, and uh, it goes to show like how bad things really are. Because again, this is a PR piece in Doctor Who magazine. If if things were really going well, they wouldn't be worried. They'd be triumphant. They'd be gloating about how Get Woke actually wins uh, because this is what they wanted to do. He says, it's easy to stay offline when your health or job or nature might make that. It's easy to say stay offline when your health or job or nature might make that impossible. So he knows the reaction for fans is terrible to this. He he doesn't want to go online because the fans hate what's going on. He has turned his back on the fans. He's flying in the face of the fans intentionally and is very aware of it. Don't think these people are incompetent. They are mastermind manipulators. That's what Russell T. Davies is. Uh, and I'm sorry because then, yes, spoilers will fly. There's never been a transmission pattern in the digital age that's perfect for everyone, he says. Um, and so this will be hitting over the weekend. If you're ever going to stay up till midnight with a bottle of cider or a box of chocolates and sit there and watch Doctor Who, I recommend it for that one because you will be screaming. So this is uh, going to be the episode that's coming up. So he's very, very nervous about it, but it is coming out. Now, incidentally, uh, they're going to be putting these uh, uh, this two-part finale out in theaters as well. Now, this is not the first time that Doctor Who's done this, but it is the first time in the new era where nobody watches Doctor Who anymore. I'm very excited to see what happens with this because uh, if you're going to uh, a BBC Cinema, actually, please, if you're, if you're uh, from the UK, and uh, and you uh, and you do end up going to the cinema for this. I don't know how many people are still watching. Uh, let me know how empty the seats are. I actually am very interested in reporting on that because nobody else is going to report on that. And uh, when we want to cover it, send me send me pictures to my email. I, I would love to uh, to see that when it happens. I think that's actually next week, not this week, because it's going to be when the full finale is coming out. Uh, let me know how empty the theaters are, whether people showed up for this or not, because. Uh, this is a, meant to be a promotional event, but th- this kind of type of thing only works when something's very popular and it's a, it's a success already. It's quite the opposite we have with Doctor Who. Now, I mentioned the media is starting to crack on this front as well, and uh, you can see it from Gizmodo. Now, Gizmodo is an access media mainstream outlet that just is full shill. And uh, you'll see the shilly types uh, during this uh, as they couch the criticism uh, of this show because the character moments are completely gone from Doctor Who. Uh, there, there's just running, r- running into these like weird scenarios, uh, with the, all this weird gay pride stuff over and over again. And, and there's no real like depth of the characters anymore. Like Mil- Millie Gibson's Ruby Sunday, really, they've, they've set up quote, a mystery of her birth. And then there's the weird snow stuff, but like, does she, she doesn't really have a personality of her own at all. She just kind of sits there and giggles and does her, even in the episode where it was fully her for an hour. Uh, like you really didn't get deep into any characterization of Ruby Sunday. It was really weird. Uh, and so this is part of the problem. They've, they've just completely foregone any character moments uh, in order to just push their agenda over and over again. Because you need the time to push the agenda, you know, and still have a plot for the episode or half a plot. Uh, and so that that makes it so the character moment time goes away. And that's exactly what's happened with the writing here. Uh, they're so focused on that, they've really screwed it up. So as you can see, there's a, there's a cost of the show's quieter moments in between. They're even starting to admit it. Uh, <laughs> uh, latest season of Doctor Who is barreling towards its end, barreling towards something. Uh, they have been doing an awful lot in their debut of a set adventure together. More often than not, we're joining them right as they're jumping out of the TARDIS and into the next romp across time and space. And it's making me realize how much Doctor Who needs to check its home base check-ins. Uh, yeah, because there's no character moments, because there's no character here. Uh, it's, it's really poorly written, and that's what we've been saying the whole time. They, they called us bigots for this uh, just two months ago, <laughs> right? When the premiere came out, and we said, this is just horrible writing. Uh, that, oh, you're just racist. Touch grass and don't watch it, right? Now the mainstream media is cracking, it, and this always happens. The, the SJWs always lie about it. They call the fans racist. They always double down and they push uh, they push the agenda even harder, like in moments like uh, Rogue, and then they always project like what they were actually about, and that that's what's happened here. And so uh, now the media, uh, the people who actually care about Doctor Who to some degree, are coming out and saying, you know what, this writing actually isn't working. Uh, <laughs> guess what? The bigots were right. <laughs> that's exactly what this this really says at the end of the day. There's moments we get to see the Doctor and their friends exist as friends uh, in the old show, yes. Glimpses of what their lives are actually like between adventures. Chances for them to just talk and get to know each other. Touches of personality. Yeah, this is poor writing. You, you, are, you are on the nose here, Gizmodo. Uh, this is a horribly written show, 
It's 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 showing in the ratings because everybody's tuned out, and it's beyond just the fact that this is just like the black gay fest, which is just an insult to injury on top of all of it. Uh, it's just poorly done all around. All right, we'll see how this premiere uh, of the uh, of the finale goes. Uh, and so uh, it's coming up this weekend. Of course, we'll have a review here on the channel like I do of every episode of Doctor Who. So make sure to stay tuned. Hit the like and subscribe button for all your great science fiction content here. And make sure to check out my Stars Entwined uh, trilogy. I've got a full trilogy of awesome books right here for you. Uh, only on Amazon. Appreciate you for being there. That link's in the description below.